Hello everyone, welcome back. I have a scrapbook layout for you today. I'm going to be documenting the story of my son Clayton, a very unusually snowy winter we had here in early 2023, and his epic blue Ford Ranger. So I'm excited to get this story into the album, and I'm using the Gnomes for Winter collection. So this is a current special out from Close to My Heart that is through December while supplies last. But you can see it's got a very strong wintry presence on here. I think this would be so cute for just snowy landscapes or ice skating or a walk through the wintry woods. But really, you can use it uh, for, you know, maybe not winter, which I have some ideas, not for today's layout, but future layouts. But I love these. These will be great for just documenting my boys in general. So everything's double sided. You've got a stripe bringing in all the colors. You've got this great collection of, you know, cold wintry words. And then the other other side is the stripe and then this pattern paper on one side you have gnomes and pine trees sleds little deer and I really actually like these this little whimsical scene the other side is gnome free so I know some of you don't like gnomes and that's okay there's the other side um, and they have a little bit different feel this is a little brighter blue this is a little bit more of the mist background but I think it, they're both very pretty and then of course you've got this plaid and the other side is this gorgeous snowflake paper that is so pretty I really really love that one so let me oh actually let me show you the sticker sheet and it, this is the 12 by 12 sticker sheet. These are heavy duty cardstock weight stickers. And there's a couple gnomes on the sticker sheet here for the good times. I think I might use that for these because they were certainly having a good time. Lots of titles on here. Winter memories, winter weather is better together, snow day, the best season of all. So, uh, you know, this could be a title and then you've got some banner elements, word sentiment stickers and just all sorts of little, there's some journaling spots, lots of good sticker options there. I do want to let you know there is a bundle option. There's actually lots of different options. You can get the pieces all of cart if you just want the paper, if you just want a stamp set. There's a whole bundle and there's also a card making workshop and a scrapbooking workshop with a guide that uh, has pre-designed layouts that you can actually download for free. So even if you don't uh, want the, you know, or if you don't get the paper and you still want that guide to use with what you have on hand, you can download that for free. So this is the Gnomes for Winter scrapbooking love the titles comfy and warm magical memories winter is here and that is the cutest little snowman there a sled snowflakes a tree and then a little winter mitten and then this is the gnomes for winter card making which is a nice collection of um, winter inspired sentiments and there's a whole bunch of cardstock you can see here with the bundle um, tons of cardstock oops it actually came with white daisy also so all of the coordinating colors and then there's this gnome thin cut. He's actually pretty darn cute. He's ice skating and he's like, wee, sailing across a frozen pond. And actually this is what he would look like. That's him in the sticker form there. He's a pretty cute little guy, huh? So let me clear this out of the way and grab my Versamat. So I already have a title idea for this particular layout and it's gonna be kind of a big title. So let me get this secured to my Versamat there. It would probably help if I had my numbers oriented correctly. And I'm just gonna square a piece of white daisy and that'll help me get all of my layers straight. As I mentioned, I already had an idea for my title. So I uh, put these stickers onto wax paper. I wanted to use up some of my consumables. These are foam. Uh, so they've got some dimension. It's kind of fun. They're squishy. Uh, foam adhesive letters. So I spelt out a rescue ranger. Now you can leave these white or they're really fun to add glitter to. I think I'm going to color them in to go along with the color scheme in the photos here. Maybe a bright blue because we've got the bright blue of my son's truck and then the sky. So I just did this ahead of time because I need to make sure that it's kind of a big title. So I want to make sure I have room on my layout. And and I do know I want to use, I think I want to use the plaid paper because um, it's just so boy. And then maybe this one too. Gosh, I just want to use them all. I've got some other layouts in mind too. So that kind of helps, you know, sometimes you want to save. You're like, oh, I know this is going to go great with those other photos. So that's just something to be mindful of. 
Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and start with the plaid. I'll set these aside. I cut a strip from the plaid paper. This is five inches by 11 and a half. So that's gonna give us a quarter inch border. And then this will be enough to kind of mat this photo. And then I'll have plenty of room for my title here. So, and then I'm picturing this one right here. I thought it would be good to bring in some of the acorn color because my son's Carhartt coveralls and his friend's Carhartt pants had that tone. It looks exactly like the color acorn, but then I thought maybe some wood grain. I have a huge collection of wood grain paper. Close to my heart had a wood grain paper pack, you know, with different tones and textures and whatnot, and I bought like four of them because I love wood grain. It just really goes with a lot of my pictures. So I found this one and I like these tones, even though it's lighter, I think it's gonna bring in, so help me bring in some of these colors and warm up the layout a little bit. So this was a scrap, it was already three inches. So I want to add some horizontal weight to this layout, something to just kind of anchor these photos. So I'm thinking something like this, and I can already tell you I do like that. And I'm wondering if I've got an idea. I wanna stamp some snowflakes, but maybe let's mat this on some sapphire cardstock. So maybe we'll do the lighter side of sapphire and then just kind of have that peeking around the corner there. Hmm, I do want the blue. I think that frames that in nicely. Let me go ahead and trim that piece down. So this one is 10 and a half by six and a half. And let's see how we can work this into the layout here. So I'm gonna go something like this. I've got this new snowflake stamp. So I wanna just, I'm picturing like this little cascading uh, cluster of snowflakes in the corner. So, you know, sometimes you see things in your mind and it looks fabulous and then you don't know, it might look totally different on paper, but sometimes you just gotta try, right? So let's bring our little pieces back in and then I can work on those snowflakes. I love the blue. I really like how that kind of just frames this in. We had a little bit too much white space. So I know it seems like no time has passed for you at all, but I actually had to, I cut my finger. I had my uh, paper trimmer up and I just like swiped my hand and the little blade, the tiny little blade caught right on my knuckle and it's it doesn't look like anything, but it was one of those that just bled and bled and bled. It was so bad, it wouldn't stop. It kept bleeding through band-aids. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't film. Nobody wants to look at that. I'm gonna get blood all over my white paper. So I lost half a day and now and the power's out so I've got the generator running in the background so if you can hear that that's what that little uh hum is but yeah it's just been one of those days but uh, it's so crazy how we can hurt ourselves in the craft room let me know in the comments below what your worst craft room injury has been uh yeah there's so many things we can burn ourselves on our heat guns uh we could of course just trip over the pile of crafting supplies we may have a uh, may or may not have piled on the stairs over there you know lot, lots of things uh so let me know i think it'll be a um, funny to read the comments and i'm sure all of us can relate to our uh, craft room hazard uh, injuries, hazard related injuries. So this is the Snow Cute stamp set. You can see there's snowflakes on here. I did get the option with the thin cuts and there's some thank you snow much and then your snow cute and you're one of a kind and may your season sparkle. So cute for scrapbook layouts and thank you cards um, or just like nice, you know, you're one of a kind type cards. But yeah, I'm gonna use this to create that little cascade of um, snowflakes here. You'll notice I flipped over my second Versamat, so I've got that nice foam backing. I'm gonna put this piece of printer paper underneath here because I'm going to be stamping off the edge. To coordinate, I am going to use sapphire ink, but this is a dark blue, so I want it a little bit lighter. I think I'm going to do second generation. I'm picking up each of the stamps with an acrylic block, and then let's just try this on our scratch paper. Stamp once, stamp again before inking, and I do like that much better. So we'll go ahead and add this to our 
uh, corner here. And when you are creating a random pattern, I highly recommend that you start kind of off the edge of the paper so it looks more natural. Start with the largest stamps and then work your way down to the smallest stamps, in this case, snowflakes. So each time I'm inking it up, stamping off, and then stamping directly on my paper. And then we will add the tinier snowflakes to fill in those spaces. It is always so nice to be able to create your own pattern paper like this and just a little piece of it, or you could do a whole background. You've got lots of potential with your stamp collection. So let's get these back into place here and then bring my title back in. On a positive note, while I was waiting for my finger to stop bleeding, I had time to think about my layout and I decided to turn it into a double page. I have two more photos that do go along with the story that I want to tell. And you're probably wondering, what do close to my heart boxes have to do with this story? I will explain um, here in a moment. So let me bring in another sheet of the sapphire cardstock and let me get this into frame for you. So very, very often when I do a double page layout, I will take whatever I chopped off of this side and just bring it over to the other side. And, you know, that's kind of my go to, which then I'd pull some white paper out here and then just, you know, build up my embellishments and photos. But since I always do this, I'm going to make myself do something different. I love this because it looks like one big 12 by 24 piece. But, you know, sometimes it's good to make ourselves, uh, you know, change things up a little bit. So I think I'm going to switch my paper like that and then maybe have these kind of in this orientation. Luckily I had enough of that wood grain so I cut a three inch piece to span across this layout and then I still want to bring in some white um, you know and then repeat maybe some of the snowflakes so it doesn't have to be exactly an exact replica of the other side but I do recommend bringing in the same colors and pattern papers. I cut a couple strips of white daisy to kind of layer under here. Now I'm thinking of still following that same line of the white daisy just for some continuity across the layout there. You'll notice I trim these down to match the other side there and we have a little bit more of the blue going around. I, I'm going to ink up the edges with black. I'll be bringing in black embellishment or black in the embellishments so I'm going to use black to edge the papers here and you can see there's black in my son's uh, truck there and black just adds just a hint of edginess sometimes oh there's a little ink thread on my paper nobody panic hey that's okay sometimes you go to swipe those and you just whoosh, put ink all over your papers there so let me go ahead and finish all of these real quick I mentioned in the beginning that we had experienced a record amount of snowfall. I've been in my current home over 20 years and never seen that much snow in one winter in such a rapid amount of time. We typically get a foot and a foot and a half every year, but we had over three feet and it came all at once. People, uh, they were having their carports were collapsing in, their sheds, I mean, all sorts of damage. Trees were just getting mucked out left and right. It was crazy. It was this heavy, heavy wet snow. My son Clayton had just bought this four-wheel drive 97 Ford Ranger from his buddy. It's kind of lifted. It had a winch on the front. He thought it was so cool, but honestly, it was a lifesaver. This little truck ended up being a snow crawling machine. I'm not going to adhere my photos down until I bring in my embellishments because there's so many different ways we can position these photos. We could do something like this. We could line this one kind of on the same line as that one and bring this one down as the same line as that one. Um, you know, we could do lots of different things. This would give us a lot of real estate if you had a big story to tell and then you can do some embellishments down here. Um, but yeah, for now, I think I'm just gonna kind of leave those maybe right there. Now I wanna add some snowflakes and some trees and things like that for embellishing, but I also wanna pull in some stamps to help tell the story. Now this is called Where the Road Ends. This is a retired stamp, it's no longer available on my website, but I mean, how perfect. Uh, pedal to the metal, off-road only. And then I know that's a Jeep, but we're gonna pretend it's a truck and then this tire mark here. So what I did is I cut 
a little half inch strip of toffee and I thought I can make a border with this tire stamp and I think that's just going to look really cool. So let's uh, scoot this out of the way and I'm going to stamp this in black on the lighter side. I am using archival black because it is the deepest, richest black. We'll go ahead and just create a border across the bottom here. Our property is about a half a mile down on a dirt road from the pavement and it's steep. So when it snows, it's like running the gauntlet and it's scary. So I, my car can't get out. There's no way. And I do have a three quarter ton uh, Dodge pickup truck, but it does not do well in the snow. And my son's truck, as I mentioned, was a snow crawling machine. So he was kind of everybody's hero. He was, you know, if I had to get to work that day, he would take me to work and he would pick me up. He was so sweet. But him and his buddies would drive around patrolling the roads, looking for opportunities to help people. They would use the winch to pull the trees out of the road or pull people out of the ditch, and they just loved it. Do you see that horizontal line in my photo? I'm going to bump this up to be continuous and on the same plane as that line. From that same stamp set, I stamped the little uh, truck here, and then I have a couple road signs. This one I stamped in toffee. It says scenic route ahead. That is actually from... Uh, an old stamp set called Urban. I know a lot of you have this in your stash, so that's where that one is from. And then this one is, again, from this stamp. It says Off-Road Only. So perfect. That one I stamped onto toffee paper. And then I have a whole bunch of snowflakes and trees. The snowflakes I stamped in sapphire, and the trees are in pine, both complementary colors here. Those are from, the pine trees are from the Evergreen Scrapbooking Stamp. So you got a couple individual pines and the Evergreen Card Making, you've got a smaller pine and then this row of pine trees here. So I just stamped a whole bunch of those because I am going to use them on upcoming layouts. And then the snowflakes are the same ones we use to stamp this cluster here. I know I want to use this sticker also that says hello winter. So I, I did remove the adhesive off the back of that one. So we can just start building up our embellishment clusters. I do want this on the line of the trees here. This is perfect because it's like just like a continuation of the forest here. I'm going to tuck those behind that little um, tire mark strip. To make embellishment placement easy, you just kind of picture going across in a triangle. So what I would do actually, so we have this over here. I could do something, you know, up here and then here, but that doesn't really draw your eye all the way across. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch these. We're going to put this one here, this one here, and then we can move our embellishment cluster to the outside edge. We'll still do something up here. I kind of like that. We've got a nice open canvas, so we want to draw some of that tan color up. And then let's put some more trees over here. I did, some of these are colored with um, a tan marker here in the center. And then, you know, when you stamp them, they're plain. So you can add some color to uh, spice up your trees. So we can just kind of put some of those over here to repeat the tree cluster we have here. And if that was the only stamp you had, you could, you know, put this up there also. And then maybe we'll layer this guy over the photo. I love tucking things behind the pictures and then things on top of the pictures to make sure or to make them feel all cohesive. I do want that to stand out a little bit better. I may put a tag behind that and then we have our Jeep too that we can add up there truck we're calling it a truck for this layout and then we've got tons of snowflakes here to play with so let me just kind of get these out here and we can just uh, move them around the layout I was creating cards and have these two tags left over. I splattered it with the Dina Wakely white gloss spray to give it that snowy look. So let's go ahead and build up the layers of our embellishment cluster here. And we'll just tuck this white tag behind the blue tag. And then everything is just kind of nestled and layered. I'm overlapping my images. Let's scoot these over so we have room for that truck right here. Perfect. 
everything's working together to create a fun little scene. And I do want to kind of wrap that embellishment cluster around creating like an L shape around this photo here. Even though they're not connected, it's still still kind of one cohesive piece. We'll anchor that tree with a couple snowflakes and maybe bring a snowflake up top. So we're repeating those elements. And then maybe here, you know what I need to do? I need to stamp on the background so it matches the other side. That's what I'll do. But we'll bring some snowflakes over to this cluster so I have something to layer over the top of the photo and then maybe one or two up in this section here. I included the picture of the Close to My Heart boxes because I was so excited to get it. It was brand new product and there was no way FedEx was coming up to our place. So they dropped it at a secondary location at a lower elevation and I couldn't justify driving on these roads just to get scrapbooking supplies. So finally, I had to go into the vet hospital and take care of the hospitalized patients and do the morning treatments and whatnot. So my son took me to work that day and and then took me over to retrieve my brand new scrapbooking supplies and they were it was new products so I was super excited to get it now I want to use this pedal to the metal stamp set and to make it more interesting I'm adding a pop of color I love using my background and texture stamps for applications like this. I blotted it off once and then second generation right over the sentiment. And I'll die cut that with a circle die. The little pop of color just adds a little interest to it. So now I can use this to embellish maybe there. Actually, I want it over here with the truck. You can see in the picture, there's a circle in the snow. He was down in an open, empty parking lot spinning some donuts because, you know, when you're a boy, you're 16, that's what you do. It's cool, right? I also have this adorable snowman I wanted to include. This is from the Gnomes for Winter scrapbooking stamp, and I did color him with my tri-blend markers to coordinate with the layout. I cut off the bottom of this tag because it was just wasted, and I'm going to make another tag to put up here. So I will still have these cute little dots, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then I also printed up my journaling on uh, white daisy cardstock and then I cut this down so I can slide this right underneath here I was gonna uh, print it on sticker paper and adhere the sticker paper to this piece and then I thought well why don't I just do it this way and save myself a step of having to apply this sticker so um, I had a lot to say so I wanted to type that up and I think it looks really nice in that spot there I mentioned earlier I want to add some of the snowflakes to complement what we created on the left hand side. So again, in second generation, I'm stamping just a few tiny snowflakes. I don't have a lot of real estate down in this area. I'll also repeat that up in the upper right hand corner. I went ahead and stamped the word awesome in black. I wanted black up there and it goes well with the photo. Now, I don't know what to do with this here. I created a couple samples. Now, these are question marks that I'll probably never use, but I colored uh, black, blue, and then you can see the glitter gel there. So I think the blue is gonna be too much. The glitter gel, not enough. So let's go with the black. What I did just to kind of get a better visual is die cut the word ranger from the Slimline Alpha die. I, I love this die, but I, it would have been, to spell out the entire Ranger Rescue would have been too much because it's taller than the foam letters, but this will still give me an idea of what the black is going to look like. And you know what? I think that it's good. I'm just gonna go for it. Let's color these in with my black marker hair. I thought the title Rescue Ranger was appropriate because, well, they were going around rescuing people who were stuck in the snow, and it was about his little Ford Ranger. So we, the neighbor kids got involved. That's who's in the group photo up top where he's holding the shovel up like, yes, I will conquer. And we dubbed them the Big Hill Search and Rescue Team. I've got all my letters colored in and moment of truth here. You know what? I love it. I actually really like it. I'm glad I did that. I do want to point out I've got this awkward spot right here beneath the photo. Originally, I was thinking about putting my journaling in there, but I had way too much to say and it wasn't going to fit. So I did have some additional uh, embellishments I had. This was from a stamp set. Actually, it's not even a stamp set I own. I was scrapbooking with a friend and I thought it was really cool. So I stamped a bunch of different colors. And then I've got this so rad and I wanted to incorporate these, but it was kind of getting to the point where it's just 
too many embellishments. Like it's okay, but I feel like you've got all these embellishments drawing your eye and it was just a bit too much. And I even, I was looking at the sticker sheet here. I thought about this one, but again, it's just too many titles and things going on. I thought about these little strip stickers. I thought I could put these and this was okay. This was not too you know, obtrusive and I could just put maybe a few of the little details there, but then let's try this. We can eliminate this spot. I hadn't adhered this embellishment cluster down completely. So let's move the photo down. And now we're on the same line as the photo on the right hand page. We're at the same visual plane there. And we can just uh, bump our embellishment cluster up. So we'll make this tag stick up a little bit more. And then we can bring these things back in here. We've got our, our word awesome. So since that's taller, now I feel like it needs a little stair step down. So we'll put this little white tag here and then bring in our awesome tab. So we added more to it. We did still add more embellishments, but in the same area, not in an additional area. And then as I pointed out, bringing these two onto the same plane, I feel like this design is more pleasing to the eye. It's not overdone and we've eliminated that awkward space. Let me hold this up for you and you can catch still shots over on my Instagram, Facebook, or Pinterest pages. There's the boys having so much fun and see how that color just makes that pop over the sentiment. And over here, I did add the so rad and I added more of that wood panel paper because on the other side, it went all the way to the edge and on this side, it didn't. So I wanted to fix that so it was um, consistent with the other side. If you could take a moment to hit that thumbs up button, I would be very grateful. And if you're looking for more winter inspired layouts, then watch these videos right here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you very soon here on YouTube.